All right. First off, wanted to thank all of you for uh, being here, but also for helping sell the story of our team last year. Um, what a special year. And a lot of you in this room made that possible for just sharing about our student athletes. So thank you. Uh, one thing I love talking about, I think you guys know this, is the elephant in the room. Uh, one thing I really respect about Mitch Barnhart is just how transparent he is. And um, the elephant in the room this year is our national ranking, right? We're number eight. It's a significant number, number eight. Every single poll so far has this number eight. Um, number eight, we're eight days away from our season. I wore number eight in college. Eight teams make it to Omaha. <laughs> so um, I'll tell you this, as far as that, I will tell you that our internal expectations will always be higher than any external expectations we have. Our goal has been really clear since we've been here to make it to Omaha, but to also win a national championship. So any external road, expectations or rankings that will never be greater than our internal ones. So um, I talk about family winning and development all the time. I'd love to talk about our family, which is our team. Um, this team has gotten a lot closer since we've been here. We brought in a ton of new players. We lost a lot of really good players. Um, but I can tell you from the first time they got here to where we are now, our team is dramatically closer. Are we as close as we were at the end of last season? No way, not even close. But we haven't been through as much adversity either. Um, I think every great team has to prove they can take a punch. Last year we started out 0-4, and, and you saw what we did. We did something that was never been done before. So um, winning, this team is extremely competitive. From the second they got here, they have competed in everything they've done, and they continue to do that. When they got back in January, I can tell you this is a really focused group. And then as far as development goes, I can look all of you in the eye and tell you that they're all better students, better people, and better players from the time they got here in August. And I think you guys all know how important that is to me. Um, as far as the student part, we had our first ever scholarship SEC Scholar Athlete of the Year in Zach Logue. So um, I know you guys don't clap in media days, but if you could, I think you would. Um, <laughs> You know, this team, we had a team GPA when you think about our scholarship student athletes of above a 3.1 and our non-scholarship student athletes over 3.2. Our team GPA again was above a 3.2, which I'm really proud of. And I stood up in front of our team and basically said, that means if you get a B, you hurt our team GPA. We had over 100 A's. It's the most letter grades. We had over 30 more A's than we did B. So just happy and proud of them. And then as people, I had the opportunity to speak at the governor's prayer breakfast on Tuesday morning. And uh, what a tremendous honor. But I can tell you that room clapped the loudest when I told them that this team gave over 210 hours of community service this past fall in three and a half months. And they went out and found the community service on their own. So how are we developing as people? I talk about standards all the time. That's the most out of any team that I've coached. They gave over 210 hours so far, and um, they continue to do that. And then as people, they're all better. Every single player in our program is better from where they were a year ago, and that, that part's exciting. I do have to brag about our staff. Um, we had a special year. We did some things that have never been done, but I'm telling you the best thing I've done since I've been here is hired awesome people. I hired leaders of men, and they are experts in their field. You think of Todd Williams, the job he did in his first year, he led our offense. In SEC games only, we led the SEC in 10 different offensive categories. We set a school record in hits. We've been playing baseball for over 120 years, and we had more hits than any team ever. Um, you think about the job Jimmy Bellinger has done, it's just been phenomenal. We set two school records last year for strikeouts and batting average against. We had our first ever SEC Pitcher of the Year. In all the years we've been in the SEC, we never had one, and Jimmy Bellinger was able to make that happen. And then you think about Roland Fanning. What has he done? He's only assisted Coach Williams in runner offense, but we landed a top 10 recruiting class in our first year. So those guys have just done awesome. Uh, we welcome back John T. Shelby. Um, as you guys know, he'll coach base, first base for us. He was part of our 06 SEC championship team. Um, he is now married to a beautiful his beautiful wife, Trish. They have two adorable children. So that means more kids at the ballpark. So you guys will have to just fight them off after the games. Um, but he's back. He has just a really neat experience. He was fifth round draft pick, made it to AAA. He was actually an area scout for two, to, two years in the state of Florida. So you think about how lucky we are for our student athletes to be a guy that has done what they're doing. He's coming back to finish his degree. He's played professional baseball. He's been a professional scout, and now he gets a chance to be with them. Um, be on the lookout. I've never seen someone with so many different handshakes. Every time a guy gets to first base, I think he's got about 20 different handshakes. 
So uh, excited to have him back. Our support staff, Reese Wallace, our equipment manager, we welcome into a new line of uniforms. Um, the guys tease me because I don't really care much about gear, but we have all brand new uniforms this year. We move into a new Nike Elite deal. Coach DeVrant, as Rachel mentioned, Ryan DeVrant and his staff has done awesome. Our guys are bigger, faster, stronger. They've all improved. He's done awesome. Brian Wells, who's assisted by Angel, he's our athletic trainer. Just done a phenomenal job. Phil DePace, our video coordinator. Kirsch Kimball is a graduate student manager, and all our student managers are just, man, I, I, I could not go today without mentioning their names. Um, I'll tell you who deserves a gra uh, game ball is our grounds crew so far. We've had some challenging weather. And uh, Marcus Dean and Marcus Ellswick and Tommy Davis and Dave Thomas and Chuck and all those guys, they've just done awesome. Um, another guy I want to mention is Michael Stone. Michael Stone's our academic counselor. I want to tell you guys, in the last year and a half, we've had Max Kuhn, Ryan Wilkes, Ryan Streeby, and Austin Cousin all come back and get their degrees. And then you think about last year. We had Tyler Marshall, Storm Wilson, Marcus Carson, Troy Squires, Colton Clary, Connor Hetty, Gunnar McNeil, Zach Rex, and Logan Salo all graduate. That means in the last year and a half, we've had 13 different student athletes graduate. And I know the commissioner, that's a big deal for him. He, he made the statement, and we want to graduate every student athlete, and we're doing that. And so thank you to Michael and his staff. Um, some big news I'd love to tell you. Um, our season tickets are totally sold out for the first time ever. We do not have any more season tickets. Like, why did that happen? Uh, because the Big Blue Nation is awesome. That's why. Um, I tell our team all the time, there's always another level, right? Like you make it to A ball, then you got to make it to high A, then you got to make it to double A, then you got to make it to triple A, then you got to make it to the big leagues, and it's not good enough just to be in big leagues. You got to be a big league all star, then you want to be a Hall of Famer. So, my challenge to the Big Blue Nation is we bought the tickets, now you got to show up. <laughs> right? So that's my uh, plea to them. Brian Midrovic and our ticket office, Kathy Hurst, have just done awesome. So thank you to them. This is our 50th, 50th and final season at the Cliff. 50 years. We're going to do some really neat things. Um, our final series against Mississippi State, we're inviting back all of our alumni. We're also inviting back our 1988 team to do a reunion. Um, we're going to just celebrate. We're going to show tours of the new stadium. It's going to be really neat. There's been a lot of really special years there. Um, as far as the new stadium goes, I knew some questions would come on that. Um, every time I talk about it, I thank our president, Dr. Capilouto and Eric Monday for what they've been able to do to make that possible. Thank you to Kevin Saul, who spends hours and hours a day on it, and along with Russ Pear. Um, excited about it. What's going on with our new stadium? The graphics package is getting finalized. It'll start, all that stuff will start coming in in April. Also, our playing surface, they're going to start putting that down in April, which is kind of neat, uh, right around a corner. It's going to be an opportunity for us to recognize a ton of our former players. It'll be a library for UK baseball. Um, we're excited, and I'm most excited to tell you that we're on pace, and we'll be in it in August. So it's on schedule. That's where we'll be. Um, it's going to be a really neat deal. I want to thank Greg Herbert for all the marketing that he's done. Um, we got fireworks back on SEC games, fireworks on Friday nights. Those are back. The kids will be able to run the bases after Saturday's games, and our guys are going to stick around after Sunday SEC games and sign autographs. So um, now about our team. It's a lot of info, right? Um, you guys know how big I am with standards and accountability. I sat up right here a year ago and told you we needed to be a half run better offensively. And if we were half run, half run better defensively, we would do some things that would be special. I'm, I'll tell you that we did it offensively. We fell short defensively. So there would be a huge emphasis on our, our team defense this year. Um, obviously, pitching and defense, you know how much I love offense, but it's all about pitching and defense. And when you look at the two teams that played for the national championship last year, Florida and LSU, two teams from our league, they also led in defense. So um, as far as pitching goes, guys, I'm in a totally different spot than we were a year ago. I sat up here and we didn't return a weekend start. That is not the case this year. We returned 77% of our starts. You talk about totally flipping. We returned 66% of our innings and 75% of our wins from a year ago on the mound or back. So obviously that has got us excited, right? As far as defense is concerned, we want to be committed to be a defensive, t elite defensive team. And we got to try to commit 16 fewer errors. 16 fewer errors. We have challenged our team to do that offensively. Here's where our roles are flip-flopped. Listen to this. We lost our, and you guys all know this, but we lost our everyday first baseman, second baseman, shortstop, third baseman, left field, and center field. 
But we're excited. We are excited. <laughs> Man. Man. Yeah, so if you had to break those numbers down, it's 69% of all of our starts. 61% of our at-bats, 59% of our runs, 62% of our hits, 63% of our doubles, 90% of our triples, 60% of our home runs, 59% of our RBIs, and 57% of our walks. But I promise we'll still be good offensively. <laughs> we have some really good players. Um, we have placed a huge emphasis on scoring first. Last year we were 31-10 and 10 when we scored first. So that will be an emphasis for us this year. Um, let's break through some of our, our pitchers. I'm, first pitcher I want to talk about is Justin Lewis how big he's been to get us back. His 11th round draft pick, um, to have him back, he is stronger. You guys know how good his changeup is, but his slider is the best thing that has happened to him. The other day in scrimmage, he threw an 85-mile-an-hour slider at the back foot of one of our left-handed hitters. He did not have that pitch a year ago. And um, so that is going to be a huge pitch for him. I'd love to talk about, obviously, Sean Jelly, just voted, as Matt mentioned, second-team All-SEC. He was He's the reigning SEC Pitcher of the Year. He stayed here this summer with Coach DeVrant. He's gained 20 pounds. He is bigger. He is stronger. Um, he's attacking hitters as well as he's ever has, and uh, his changeup's better. And then the third piece to that puzzle is Zach Thompson. He's better. His changeup, his breaking ball slider are all better. So when you th talk about our weekend rotation between Jelly, Zach Thompson, and Justin Lewis, uh, we feel really good about those three. Um, bullpen pieces, Chris Mockamer is a guy, obviously, Logan Salo was the first team all SEC. You start sitting there thinking about we had the first team all SEC pitcher and we had the first team all SEC closer. That's going to be tough to replace, right? Uh, Logan Salo, but Chris Mockamer is a guy that has done really well. He was undefeated as a freshman, as all you guys remember. He's throwing the ball well. Brad Schinzer is a guy who's going to throw valuable a valuable role for us. Last year he started games. He threw out the bullpen. He's going to do that again. Um, Zach Cocky is a junior college transfer that we have one of the highest rated prospects in the entire country he's been 92 96 he throws an 85 to 88 mile an hour slider we're excited about him except he was at class a couple weeks ago he's walking out of class slips down the stairs and breaks some bones in his left hand we're not excited about that but he's probably a couple weeks away but he'll be back and ready to go it is his non-throwing hand so that's good freshmen's daniel harper mason hazelwood and jimmy ramsey have all impressed they're gonna pitch for us along with Alec Malley. So um, that's our pitching staff. Catchers, obviously you guys all know this. We have Troy Squires back, second team All-SEC catcher. Um, and Cole Cottom, we have as two good of catchers as anybody in the country. I feel confident about that. And our third catcher, Marshall Gee, has the biggest servant heart that you can ask for. Infielders, who's going to play first base? It's going to be a couple different guys. Cole Cottom's going to spend some time there. Uh, Troy Squires, TJ Collette, Braden Combs are all guys that have played there. Luke Becker slides from third base to second base. He was just voted by the coaches All-SEC second team. Um, we're excited. He's a senior. He is better in all areas of his game. Trey Dawson, if the season started today, would be our shortstop. He has earned it. Um, he's as good as defender as I coached. Um, he came to us from Chipola Junior College where they won a national championship. He won the gold glove there. Third base, is Luke Hires, a guy that saw some playing time there some last year. He is much improved, um, along with Alex Rodriguez, Troy Black, Colton Kessler, and I mentioned Brady Combs at first base, and Zeke Lewis are all guys that will play for us. Um, last thing is the outfitters. Tristan Pompey, obviously, is the catalyst there, right? Returning All-American. Um, he's going to play some time in left field. He'll play some in center, but left field is the hardest place to play in our ballpark. When you think about the short right field, you don't have to cover as much ground, and Tristan is an elite defender. So um, he'll play some in, in center, but obviously left field is an important piece. Zach Rex did a phenomenal job. And then last couple guys I want to mention are our junior college transfers um, in the outfield, Ryan Shin, Bennett Klinsky, and Ryan Johnson. And Cam Hill, the freshman from Scott County, will see some time in the outfield. So last thing I'll cover before I open it up is uh, our schedule, another challenging schedule, 21 games versus ranked opponents, nine versus teams ranked in the top six. We have 25 teams that made a, 25 games against a team that made it uh, to a regional last year, 12 teams that made it to a super regional. And um, my last plea is to the Big Blue Nation, we need you there because uh, it will be a home field advantage. And yes, we will be playing Sweet Caroline every eighth inning. <laughs> so please sing along. <laughs> Questions? That was a lot of information. If I walk out of here with no questions, I'll be the proudest coach. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. No. <laughs>
on, on this, the pitching staff in particular compared to some of the programs you've been at before when you won the World Series and then the Lions got you? Well, you know, I, I mentioned three freshmen that haven't pitched yet. Um, do I think they have some really, really high ceilings? I do. But when you look at the amount of innings that we have back, it's a really talented deep staff, right? I just mentioned 10 names to you guys. And um, when you look at the teams that have competed for national championships, that's what they're throwing. They're throwing seven to 10 guys. And those are the guys that are chewing up the bulk of the innings. And um, this has good depth. Uh, you know, how Zach Cocky comes back from the injury and how he does is obviously going to be a key piece. But um, there's definitely some talent and depth there, and one that I believe gives us a chance to make a run to win the whole thing. Nick, you said your team needed to make 16 fewer errors. That's right. Why 16? Well, because when you look at what the standard is to lead the league in defense, right, we committed anywhere, depending on the year, between 14 and 16 too many errors. And for us to be elite, if the strength of our team, I always say this is our team, we got to get better defensively. Right. So how do we do that and what's the standard? Well, we just basically looked over the last five years and saw how many errors led the league and we want to lead the league in fielding. So that's the number. Yeah. Nick, this time last year, really two or three weeks in, you were trying to convince these guys that they're good. And now you've got a lot of guys back from a great season, plus a lot of new faces. So how would you describe the dynamic now with regard to team confidence and, and goal building and all that. You know what, Dick, that's exactly, that's a, a wonderful point because, you know, when I first mentioned Omaha to them, they kind of like would tilt their head and be like, you crazy coach, right? But um, I do believe that the word belief, in order to, to believe, you have to have faith without seeing. And they needed to go through that. They needed to see what it was like, right? Um but now I give this, we do this really neat deal where we give our players an opportunity that are returners to stand up in front of the team and talk about anything that they want to talk about, whatever's on their heart. And, uh, man, I've been really impressed with our team so far. But about every guy talks about Omaha now. And a year ago, maybe not so much the case. We've got players printing out pictures and showing what the stadium looks like, and guys got pictures in, the lock, in their lockers. And um, they believe and they know now. But – it took that special group from a year ago. And then for this group to be two wins and to be that close. But they believe now. They believe. The first half of last season, you guys bunted a lot, stole a lot of bases, uh, obviously wore a lot of pitches. Um, and then as the season went on, maybe the bunting went away and more power developed. Do you see that with this team this year, that you're going to bunt a little bit more early? Or what's that dynamic? Right, so there's six components to have a good offense, right? Hitting is just one of them. I always use the example. You guys heard me use the example of pizza, right? There's like a bunch of different slices, and each to have a, a successful offense, bunning is one of the six slices to a good offense, and strike zone discipline is. So um, we will always bunt. We'll always get hit by pitches. Um, we will always hit and want to leverage baseballs. Um, how much, I think time will tell, but that will always be a piece because you're not going to be able to hit every day, right? This league is really hard. You start looking at the top draft picks and the Friday night starters in this league, man, right? It's the best league in America, so you have to find other ways to score. So we will fire all those bullets. That will be a piece of our offense again. Yeah. Nick, what was it like with those conversations with Justin, whether he was deciding whether to sign or come back, and then what's it mean to, to have him back? Well, he's extremely bright. Like, this is a guy that is, you know, committed to education. And to his mom's credit, Justin will graduate this spring. And that was a big deal to that family to be able to graduate. Not only is that what the commissioner wants and our athletic director wants, that's what I want too. So the fact that he gets – to come back and finish his degree and still be draft eligible. And when you start thinking about players and their ceilings, right, he, it's, he's not even close to his ceiling. He needed to establish his breaking ball. He needed to get bigger and stronger so he can hold his velocity late in the year, right? Those were all things that I could look him and his mom in the eye and just say, hey, you're not done growing, right? For a guy like Zach Logue, man, that guy has just, he did everything he could. Right, he was ready for that opportunity and did great in professional baseball. So for him as a draft double junior, that made a lot of sense. But Justin Lewis having a, two more years to potentially be here and then for him to have the opportunity to get drafted again and to graduate, he just knew that 
he wasn't even close. So he could maybe turn that 11th pick, 11th round draft pick into maybe a top five, a top three round, maybe a top two round, right? And uh, he believed that. And it took a lot of confidence. And uh, I'm happy he did. What's Tristan's ceiling like? And how important is this season to potentially his draft stuff? Yeah, he, he's as talented as, as a player, I, be, I believe, in the country as you start going through. And I think the media and everyone else agrees. Um, Tristan, the whole key to his season is going to be the strike zone. When Tristan can handle the strike zone, and he does well with that so far in our preseason, get this, in our games, he has 10 walks and one strikeout. When he does that, Tristan is unstoppable. He's also him and TJ Collette are leading our team in hitting in this, in this preseason. But um, he's a talented player, and when he handles the strike zone, he's as good a player as there is out there offensively. Last season, last season, you guys lost the first four games. How important is it next weekend for you guys to kick it off, you know, with those four wins in Wofford? Well, we do. We want to get started on the right foot. But, um, you know, sometimes the quicker the adversity comes, the easier. So you can start dealing with it. When you don't deal with a ton of adversity early and it comes late, it's sometimes hard to come out of it. But obviously, we know that adversity is going to come. You don't ever want to lose games, right? Like, let's get started on the right foot and have guys and give some guys opportunities and get guys in some different roles. So we'll always want to get started on, on the right foot. That's definitely going to be important. But also, anytime things don't go our way, what an unbelievable opportunity to learn. And um, we'll learn about our team. You're just talking about Tristan. What do you think of Tristan and Sean, another guy who might go first round in June? What do you think it does for the international profile? Well, Derek, that's a good point, and um, I want to tell you that us in LSU last year, we had the most top 10 round draft picks in the whole country. When you start thinking about over the 300 schools, right, we had the most top 10 round draft picks in the whole country. We had six, and the way I'm looking at our team, I think we're going to have at least six again. So the fact that, especially in recruiting, right, we talk about family winning and development, well, that's really happening. Right, like with what our student athletes have done in the classroom, what they have done in the community, and then obviously we're doing it on the field. That'd be it's really important, not only for them but for our program. So the next person can come in and understand, like, hey, this is possible. Like Evan White, I can come in and be in the eleventh overall pick. And Evan White wasn't even drafted out of high school; he went undrafted to the eleventh overall pick in the country. What a neat deal! You mentioned TJ. How's his knee? His health and. What more of a role other than pinch hitting or maybe a DH will he provide? Well, he's taken as good as swings as anybody right now. He has committed himself to his diet, Coach DeVrent, and you know what, our nutritionist, you know, Miss Monica and Shay Carson have just done a phenomenal job with TJ. And uh, his weight's down, his percent body fat's down, his strength is up. He's running better than he ever has, and he's totally healthy. But the biggest thing with TJ is it starts with him mentally, and he is in a really, really nice place mentally. Who are you looking for to replace guys like Evan White on and off the field in terms of leadership? Well, Cole Cottom and Troy Squires have been as good as leaders as we've had. And then you start thinking about the pitching staff and Justin Lewis and Sean Jelly. Those guys have just done a phenomenal job with their leadership. And, you know, just all those guys that have been back, all of them, right? Like we tell our guys, everybody's a leader. Everyone's going to lead one way or the other. Like you don't get to pick that. So it's like we need to handle their business like professionals, right? Like everyone gets to lead. But those four guys have just done a phenomenal job, um, along with Luke Becker. Our guys, they've really accepted that leadership role. What are some of the challenges and maybe benefits of relying on some of the junior college transfers? What comes so when we got hired, that's a really good question because, you know, we knew we were going to lose some guys to the draft. And um, at the time, we didn't really know what we had. So, you know, we're recruiting those junior college players in the fall, and we've barely even seen our players play. So that's important because I love junior college players because they've been through it. And most of these guys have started out at four year, other four-year schools and have now went to junior college and now here. So they're at their third place. And I just love how much they appreciate everything. Right, like they see a white baseball and they're like, wow, look at this. This is a white baseball, right? Like they're not worried about like when the next gear, you know, it's just like. But the fact that we have some guys with a ton of experience is going to be crucial, especially at the Division One level. Nick, you scheduled last year, as we all know now, purposely to put your team in front of a good opponent. 
did you tweak scheduling this year or did you just kind of go with the usual? Well, we chose to go to uh, Spartanburg. We opened up in Spartanburg, South Carolina. And one of the reasons why we chose that is because on Friday night, we're going to get to play Wofford at their field. And then on Saturday, we get to play UC Upstate for two games at their field. So the fact that we got a chance to play on the road and it wasn't just a round robin deal. Um, as far as the schedule, we our second weekend we'll be home against Oakland. But on our third weekend, what a challenging schedule. We're going down to play in the, the Shriners Classic. And every single team in that deal that we play is ranked. Every single team. So not only are our guys going to get a chance to play in a big league ballpark, the Houston Astros, who just won the World Series, will also get a chance to make a visit to the Children's Hospital and just what a neat deal, right? Great competition. What another way for us to develop them as people. And then our, our, we're going to welcome Texas Tech here to play a series who's ranked in the top five in basically every single major poll, right? So when you start thinking about the level of competition, we have another demanding schedule. And that's important to me because not only for RPI, but I, if we're going to face some adversity, I want it to be hard. I want it. Let's get it out early. Let's like get to the point and let's challenge and let's just continue to grow. So our schedule is going to be another very, very difficult one, but I just, that's, I, I don't want it any other way. Yeah. What was it like last year? I mean, this room is full of possibility at this time of year. I think you believed it. I don't know if any of us believed it. You, you know, didn't. What? You didn't. <laughs> what was it like? The ability, the results started matching with belief last year. How did you build on that? Well, I said last year, um, one of my favorite things to do as a coach on the field is to watch those guys celebrate. So I watched that dog pile. I bet you I've watched it 250 times. It's my favorite thing to do. So last year was really hard for those guys because change, you know, I talked about that all year long. It's really hard, right? If you, any of you have ever had a different boss or you've had to change a job or even change the way you drive to work sometimes, it's hard. And they totally embraced it. So the fact that they got an opportunity to do something that's never been done before, we graduated all those student athletes, and then just to, for them to be able to have that for the rest of their life is like really, really powerful. And that's what I want for this year's team. I want them to do something that's never been done before. Right? I, I've, I've been blessed. I've been to College World Series five different times. I've played for National Championship two different times. I want it for these guys. They're the ones that deserve it. So anytime they get a chance to do something that's never been done before, I feel like that equips them for life. And uh, we want that for them again. Nick, you mentioned Justin's improvement. How has Sean improved or changed his game? Well, the one thing I respect about Sean is how competitive he is. And he sat in my office at the end of June. And I said, Sean, you're the SEC Pitcher of the Year. You were our Friday night starter. You're going to be, in my eyes, if you do what you're supposed to do, a first-round draft pick. But I'm looking you in the eye right now in front of the rest of our coaches and telling you, you will not be our Friday night starter next year. And he kind of tilted his head, and I go, the same way you earned it this year, you're going to have to earn it again. And he looked at me and said, fair enough, coach. He goes, I'll earn it again. <laughs> and you know what? To his credit, if the season started today, that's who we'd start on Friday night. But he has earned it, just like every one of our players. So I just love how competitive he is. And you watch him while he's pitching, and when he's not, he's as good as teammate as we have. That pays attention as well as anybody that we have. And um, when you start thinking about that, this is competitive makeup, his skill level, and then how much he cares about the team, he's special. Last year, Marcus Carson and Tyler Marshall and Chetty had seasons that nobody really saw coming. And I know there's a lot of new faces, but do you see a couple of people that say, hey, this guy could have a breakout year that – Maybe some of us in here aren't expecting. Well, Cole Cottom's just so much better, right? Um, obviously, Troy Squires, he's the second-team All-SEC catcher. We only rank two, two catchers in our league, right? So he was voted upon. So obviously, he got the credit that he deserved a year ago. But Cole Cottom's a guy that's much improved. And from all areas of his game, from mentally, physically, the way he carries himself, all of that is better. So I, I look for him to have a, a very, very special, special year for us. What do you think that uh, pitching in the postseason did for Zach Thompson last year, and how will it help him in his sophomore season? 
You know what? It's hard to say enough good things about him. I mean, he was a freshman All-American, and the way he handled, even pitching against a really good Indiana team, I mentioned this last year, how big of a deal that was to pitch against your own state, right? The, but that helped him. The one thing I respect about him is just, again, how competitive he is, and he wants to learn. He shows up every day, and he wants to learn, right? You just saw the rankings for next year, I, th- I believe. Matt, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think he was a number one rated college prospect for the 2019 draft. I mean, that's how good he is. But um, he's just super competitive, and anytime this league is really hard, anytime you can get experience, especially in a postseason, it helps, and it's going to help him. I think you talked about reducing the errors overall. When you have a starting pitching staff, is good. Does that give you any more leeway to maybe put better defenders in the lineup at times to look as you don't have to score them in the room? Absolutely, you would hope, right? Like, we still have our game goals, right? We want to give up four runs or less. That is our defensive game goal. But um, when you start breaking it down, I think you guys could tell how much I love numbers, and I've really studied our team, and I want us to do something that's never been done before. So, But there's 27 outs in a baseball game. The more you can strike out, say we strike out 10, well, there's 17. If we can get them to hit four routine fly balls, now we only need, what, 13, right? So you start going through it, and it's like the amount of plays you have to make become less and less and less because you have a pitching staff that could strike guys out, which we proven that we could do last year, right? We set a school record. So anytime you do that, yes, there'll be times where our lineup will not be based on just what you can do offensively but defensively because we understand the importance of it and that we're – we believe at this point could be one of the strengths of our team, so we'll have to feed that. Great question. One or two more guys are here and ready to talk to you as well. Anything else? Thank you guys again. See you at the ballpark. Go Cats. Great, he wanted me to drink one of those. <laughs>